Rich Medina, and this is the Seller Spotlight on Discogs. I started DJing because my older sister, Benita, her first husband was a local DJ. And, you know, from kindergarten, I remember just like chin on the ground watching him pack 45s into a little pleather suitcase and go to the VFW to do his thing. So it's been rooted in me from, from childhood and it came from inside my family. Or I have records in my stash now that were part of his his record collection, absolutely. I'm not sure if I can necessarily classify myself as a as a just a collector or just a DJ. I think that both spaces feed each other for me. You know, I'm, I'm pretty aggressive about my analog disposition. I always bring four or five pieces of vinyl at minimum, just because you never know, computer failure, drive failure, panic moment. The best thing you can do is have a, a safety net and analog is always going to be there for you, you know. It's absolutely paramount to hit the shops, you know, whether you got paper to blow or whether you're on a budget. You got to, man, it's recon, you know, you got to get out and check out the marketplace. The whole phenomenon of people giving you things, I mean, what a luxury of the game. The fact that you're at your job and people are giving you things that they think are going to add on to the tapestry. And we don't really have the luxury to be too elitist or too standoffish in that department, you know. More often than not, it's your whole approach is trash. So those two, those two energies go hand in hand because that could be the person that's like, hey man, I just wanted to pass off a version of whatever or so-and-so who you may know and respect asked me to give this to you. You know, you, you never know. So you gotta keep that door open, be polite. Man, my most startling VIP experience has got to be Prince. It was a deep Los Angeles, I think it was a 10 year anniversary band. Marcus Wyatt and Louis Vega in the main room and me and DJ Spinner are playing in the side room like funk and breaks. And we're doing our thing and see these gigantic security dudes coming through. I'm like, yeah, you know, we're in LA. It's a deep 10 year anniversary. They rock like that out here. Who knows? Could be anybody. Prince. You know, me and Spinner in the booth like, oh, and he purchased himself at the end of the DJ booth and <laughs> he made, me and Spinner were playing like three records a piece, just kind of round robin, having fun. And like one of each of us, each of our records in the sequence, Prince would stand up and lean over with the cane, tap you on the shoulder and be like, yeah, man. Yeah, like just, you know, like a little purple angel, like, yeah, man, yeah. You know, that was just like a head explosion. I remember in the early 2000s, there was word on the street that uh, the old Broadway Eddies from Camden, that the records were still around. Then I end up going there with Casey Funkaholic from Amsterdam. I think Spinner was there, Kenny Dope. And we go in this Camden store on Broadway, like this old mom and pop, like old dusty goose down jackets, and like, you know, South Pole, you know, that type of mom and pop spot. And upstairs is the whole stock from the old Broadway Eddies. And <laughs> It wasn't the most rare find or anything like that, but I remember we tripped over a box of like 42 uh, Cat in the Hat albums. Just like minty, fresh, sealed. And it was, that was just like, how, you know, how does that happen? 42 of them, mint, sealed. That was, that was a good day. My favorite album of all time is Roberta Flack, The Quiet Fire. Sunday and Sister Jones is essentially my childhood. I know that, I know that woman that she's singing about in that song and the man that she's singing about in that song is my grandfather. So Sunday and Sister Jones is like baked into me. 
Humility is the king of the universe. Keep your wits about you. Be polite. That's my advice for any young man, any young person with any less life experience than me. You're far more with sugar than you will with salt. <laughs>